Please pray with me. You, O oh God, you, you, O oh God, are kind and true, patient and ruling all things in mercy. We are yours, and we come to you in trusting love, desiring to be transformed, yes, transformed today by your truth. In the name of truth, in the name of the triune God. Amen. 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 See. I love you. Really, I love you. Those of you who have known me for a little or a long time, perhaps have heard me say those two words to you. Right, Liam? Exactly. I love you, Liam. <laughs> Hopefully you've come to trust that I say these words freely and without guile. It's not that hard to find something in every person I meet that I can say, wow, that's wonderful, I love them. And after just two months, it is so easy for me to say to you, I love you, to this entire parish. But for this morning, I'd like to try an experiment. It's a beautiful day, we're going for adventure. Close your eyes, please. Think of someone you care about, someone you care for. Hold them in your heart and mind. And after I count to three, say out loud, I love you. Now breathe. Ready? One, two, three. I love, I love you. you. Mm. When you say that, how does that make you feel? You can open your eyes. Perhaps an even better question is, what do you expect in response? Society has taught us to expect some version of, well, I love you too. Do you remember, perhaps, if you were here, last week's gospel, we got to listen in on a private love language between Jesus and his closest friends. Guess what? We're in the next verse. So we're still in that upper room with his disciples. Jesus said last week, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. You, I am your way. I am your truth. I am your abundant, right here, abundant life. Today, we continue to eavesdrop while Jesus tenderly teaches his friends what it means to love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. He's, he's saying that the response to I love you is not a simple, but oh, I love you too. But what he's looking for from his friends is, I see you, I will follow you. I will remember what you have taught me. I will continue to learn from you. I will show you my love in response. If you had to choose one word that sums up all of Jesus' teachings, what would that be? Love. Probably, yes, love. Which is the greatest commandment he was asked? Love God and love your neighbor. He says, Jesus said, love is an active verb. Love. My commandment is to love. Period. Nothing more. We so often complicate what Jesus says in following Jesus. As simple as, as hard as love. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, is fond of saying, it's all about love. <clears throat> Having just washed their feet, remember where we are, huh? as one posture of loving. Jesus whispers to his disciples on that intimate evening, if you love me, go love. This is my commandment. The brilliant Nigerian-American writer, Enumo Okoro, wrote that Jesus is saying, quote, if you love me, then find a way to show love and hospitality to those who are made in my image, but may Call me by another name. If you love me, then speak out when you see people mistreated for being made in another variation of 
of my image and do it in a way that honors me. It doesn't honor the world, unquote. I hear Okoro saying, reminding us that loving in the way of Jesus means always standing for the value of every person. So I am holding this with lots of other people. I'm holding on to this for us at Emmanuel as we look ahead to Pride Month in June. This scripture always reminds me of a beloved supervisor of mine. Ed was my supervisor in chaplaincy training at Holy Family Hospital in Methuen. He mentored me for the two years of what's called clinical pastoral education, CPE. And then he hired me to be his oncology chaplain for the hospital. These were transformative years for me. And then one day, after a particularly intense one-on-one -on -one conversation in his office, I happened to notice a post-it note just on the inside of the door as I was leaving. And on it was written, quote, assume the highest possible regard. Assume the highest possible regard. Now, Ed is the gentlest man I know. So later, I asked him about it and why it was posted on the door, particularly at that point in his life. And he told me that he had been praying about a difficult and challenging relationship with an important, and exactly, an important and powerful person in the hospital. And he had realized that their relationship had become a default of acrimony rather than love. He quoted our gospel passage and said that he needed the reminder, assume the highest possible regard. That loving is loving as Jesus commanded, and loving is loving the way Jesus loved the Father. Which kind of brings me up short, because it brings me back to reality. Maybe this isn't true for you, but for me, I find it hard to love some people in some situations when it's challenging and they are contrary or angry, or it's very clear that they don't love me. Jesus knew he was asking his friends to do something they couldn't do on their own. So now we come to what I think is the principal promise of affection that Jesus offers to them and to us. I have to stop for a moment and say that I hope you will pay attention <laughs> to what I'm about to say. Because in these past weeks, I have become ever more convinced that it is our way forward here at Emmanuel. Our way forward into God's desire for each one of us and our collective whole to fully flourish. Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. In John's Gospel, the Greek word for this spirit of truth, advocate, same word, it is so amazing because it's deeper and richer than anything we have, and it shows up only five times in the entire Bible. And all five are on this intimate evening. Jesus speaking a love language to his precious friends. So it's an important word. Stay with me. The word is paraclete. Not paraclete. I said it wrong this morning at the 8 o'clock. Somebody thought I was talking about a Greek cup. No. <laughs> paraclete. Paraclete is the word, and it's variously translated as advocate, intercessor, comforter, consoler, helper, and spirit of truth. And Jesus promises this powerful spirit will abide with them, abide, inhabit them. Just as Jesus is inside the Father, that's the mystery of our Trinity, this spirit will be inside of them. And us, perhaps some of you are here the Sunday that we have the call and response of what does Emmanuel mean? God is with us. God is with us. And you remember, God is with us. 
God is with us, and here in our gospel today, we find out gloriously how it works. Can you tell this gets me excited? <laughs> the great theologian Raymond Brown called it the real presence of the glorified Jesus. God is with us, is inside us as the risen, glorified, resurrected, powerful over death Jesus. You see, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be with them no longer physically, but that by his death and resurrection, he is going to be with them forever in a different, even more powerful way. Why does this matter to us, Emmanuel? Because we know that this spirit is always active, always working to realize God's kingdom the full flourishing of all creation. That means we, by the power of that paraclete in us, can do anything God calls us to. Because of the spirit of truth, the presence of Jesus, because that spirit is in us, abundance is our economy. Assurance prevails. Relationships are healed. And we are transformed to love each other with the assumption of the highest possible regard. Wouldn't it be great to be known as that congregation? Because of the power of Jesus in us, we are led moment by moment to caring for others. So come on Tuesday evening to Rising House, to bearing each other's sorrows Rebuilding Broken Hearts, come with us Wednesday evening at 7 to the pastoral care. To clearing room for all things to be made new. That's the power inside us. I truly believe that if we lean into this truth together, we can and will allow God to create a living sanctuary for all people to feel welcome and to fully realize their status as beloved, cherished people of God. So what's your part in this? Your part is utterly essential. I can't do this alone, nor can only a few of us accomplish it. If you are missing, if they are missing, we are incomplete. If you truly believe that the power of Jesus, the risen and resurrected Redeemer, is in you, then here we are full circle. Keep my commandments. Go love. And if you hear this and do nothing, we're all doomed to just be a congregation that absorbs. That's not following the way of love. Jesus said, because I live, you will also abundantly live. The power of the resurrection is inside you for a purpose. Go love. Do love. Give love. And if you can say, I love you, to the God alive in this parish, then you can hear Jesus say, show me 